A poet once said that the universe is not made out of atoms, it's made out of stories. And that's true for each of us. Each of us lives in his or her own world. And the world is made up of a lot of stories. Who did what to whom? Where you've, where you've been, where you'd like to go. Worlds and identities. The Buddha puts all of this under the category of becoming. And it's a big problem. Becoming is based on desire. You want something, and then you develop an identity around that desire. The you who can bring that desire about, and the you who will benefit. And then there's the world in which you have to act in order to bring that desire about. And the world will change with the desire. If you want something to eat, certain parts of the house are relevant, other parts are not. If you want to sleep, another part of the house is relevant. At that point, the kitchen is not relevant. So we go through life, creating worlds, creating identities, based on our desires. And the Buddha says, this is why we suffer. So as you sit down and meditate, there will be the identity and the world that got you here. The story, or the part of the story that says, it'd be a good thing to sit down right now and meditate. And the part of the world that's relevant to that desire to meditation that gets you here. And once you're here, you want to be able to put that aside. Because as long as you're thinking in terms of identities and worlds, even if you'd like to destroy the identity and destroy the world, you're going to create more and more becoming. That's when you can get out of those terms and just look at things as events, the events that would lead up to becoming, if you followed them through. And try to style them simply at the level of events. This is what the Buddha talks in terms of fabrication. Because fabrication comes before becoming. And we're engaged in fabrication right here. You've got the breath coming in and going out, bodily fabrication, the way you talk to yourself, verbal fabrication, perceptions and feelings, mental fabrications. You just leave them there. The question of who's doing them and where they're being done, that's the irrelevant part, the who and the where. Put that aside. And just look at the events and try to put them together in a skillful way, but keep it on the level of events as best you can. This is a state of becoming that we're creating as we get the mind into concentration, but the more you can keep it at the level of events, it's a transparent becoming. You get to see the process as it's happening. It enables you to see the process as there are parts of the mind that want to destroy it, that want to create other states of becoming. You can see them form, but you don't go into them. That's the important part. You don't even think about you going in as much as possible. Just there's the sense of entering in. You say, no, don't enter in. I want to watch the process. So you're trying to keep things on that level before they turn into big issues. When I talk about insight, it's a matter of seeing through these things. Because the mind likes to create these worlds. And it's like children playing make believe. You're taking on different roles. The cops, the robbers, the cowboys, the Indians. 
and you play in those roles. And then you drop them and you move on to something else. The problem is there are some roles we take on that we take really seriously. And we hold on to them, even when they become unskillful. That's what we've got to watch out for. And so you watch out for it by learning how to look at things as processes. So when you see a thought about the world appearing, remember, the Buddha said, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That's what the instructions on mindfulness are all about, looking at the body in and of itself. In other words, not in reference to whose body it is. Putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, not being concerned about where it is. I'm thinking more in terms of the qualities you bring to this, ardent, alert, and mindful. Mindful to keep in mind just the different categories of events that are happening. Breath coming in, breath going out. This is why the Buddha put so much emphasis on the processes of the mind, because he wants you to get really interested in these processes. How is it that the mind puts things together inside? Is it primarily passive, receiving things coming in from outside, or is it going out looking for trouble? Primarily looking for trouble. It wants things. It has some ideas about how it can get its wants. That anticipation, that's what drives a lot of what we do. And so we learn how to turn that anticipation into something more skillful. Anticipate that by developing a state of concentration right here and looking at things in more impersonal terms, you're going to benefit. This is one of the ironies in the Buddhist teachings. There's a point where he's talking to the monks, saying, let go of what is not yours. He talks about the five aggregates. He says, it will be for your long-term welfare and happiness. So he's going back and forth on the line there, on the one side where there's a you, and the other side where the question of who is here gets put aside. As long as you need motivation, okay, think in terms of, I'm here to meditate, I'm here to benefit from this. But trying to get your primary focus on, well, what's going on here? What are the processes? What are the steps? This is, this is why the Buddha focuses so much on these steps. As for the world, he does have a sketch of a worldview, but it's only a sketch. Even in the longest list of all the devas there are, they say these devas and many others. Because it's not his purpose to give an, an entire account of the world. And he discourages people from thinking about who they've been in the past and who they might be in the future, in terms of past lifetimes, future lifetimes. You take the basic principle as a given, as your working hypothesis. But you don't want to take it any more further than that, except for realizing that if you're not careful, you could get reborn in some pretty bad places. And that when you're, you're dying, it's not just a matter of giving up. There's work to be done at that point. But as for who you've been, the Buddha said that's one of those questions that you just put aside. So the who and the where, that's what we're trying to get away from, and just see what's going on in as clear a way as possible, in really, really basic terms. So if you see any of your personal issues coming up, try to depersonalize them as you're sitting here. See it simply as a thought, a thought world appearing. And think of the duties of the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths are not expressed in terms of 
who's suffering or where the suffering is. It's just there's suffering and there's a cause. Events. There's also a path away from suffering. And each of these truths has a duty. The duty with regard to suffering or stress is to comprehend it. With regard to the cause is to abandon it. Cessation is to be realized, and that's done by developing the path. So when a thought comes up about a place or a story, ask yourself, well, where does this fit in that framework? If you think in terms of the frameworks of becoming, it's who did what to whom where. But in terms of this framework, simply, is this stress or is it the cause of stress? Is it part of the path? If it's not part of the path, don't develop it. So you have different imperatives, and they're going to be a lot more effective than the imperatives you carry around with your stories. So you're learning to see in a new way. Because you learn how to focus on events in and of themselves. That way you undercut the cause of the problem. And that's how it's done. If you think in terms of the problem becoming, say, I want to stop this becoming, the word says that leads to more becoming. You've got to think in different terms. Watch in different terms. Talk to yourself about what's going on in different terms. We spend so much time talking to ourselves. And for the most part, it just compounds the problem. Learn to talk to yourself in new ways. Or it's in line with that chat we had just now. Be your own best friend. Point yourself to worthwhile things. Be sympathetic to your well-being. And then get to work. <laughs>